All right, welcome that that the toy did not mess up. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the high school start of the League of Legends Summer Tournament. And it's gonna be game three of the first best three series in a potential two best of threes. And this is gonna be Northview High School versus Dr. Norman Bethune Collegiate Institute. Northview High School on the blue team, and Dr. Norman gonna be on the red team. Now, we've seen these teams both play, and in these two games, we've seen them play extremely solidly, if that's a word. If they've played extremely well in these past two games, both of them pretty convincing-ish victories, I would say. I'm not sure if you agree with me, but mm. I think that's how it's been. And I'm excited to see a third game coming in. I think we all are. Like, We've watched Dr. Norman for the last couple of weeks, actually, and they both... They've always played really well, and I'm excited to see them here in the grand finals. Both of the games thus far have been of a high co high caliber. It's just teams seem to have got ahead and stayed ahead, and that's really what defines a good team. Um, we see a couple of bands coming out here. Lee Sin, after that first game when uh, Lee Xian played him, we've seen him banned out in both the subsequent games by the Dr. Norman team. Shen Ban as well, and we saw Shen in the last game, really played well by... Um, Really played, sorry, I've totally forgotten who played Shen, by Permalove, sorry. Really played well, and he managed to uh, kind of carry that game, actually, with the Stan United Ultimates, keeping his laners alive. And it'll be interesting to see what top laners have picked here, because those have really been the defining players in the game. We saw Lee Sin get, get fed in the first game and carry his lane. We saw Shen play really well in the second game and managed to carry his lane in the other lanes as well. So, Annie being hovered over here... Um, a Thresh band's come out as well. We saw Thresh in the first game played very well and banned out in the the couple of second games. Annie, what can we say about Annie? She is the pyromaniac. Annie was banned out in the first two games, I she, think. In the first game, I know. I don't the think she was banned game. out in the second game. Draven's been banned out all three games. Ooh. That's interesting. That's probably a target. I think Annie. I think, I think it's Clemens who's played Annie a lot. I'm pretty. I'm fairly certain it was Clemens who played Annie. And I remember the last time Clem played Annie is that she just got blown up before every single team fight, so it didn't work out too well. But I, I don't know, I guess we'll see how it goes, because Annie is a very strong champion, you know. Has good AoE CC, has huge burst potential. And uh oh, it's gonna be another Zed pickup. Zed was Zed so Zed strong. Oh gosh. Why did they let it happen? I don't understand. It's gonna happen again, this is scary. I am scared. Well, Zergo last game on Zed was just really good. <laughs> yeah, she was. He was so strong, and I think what happened was he got that early assist from the Maga Sunday gank with the Elise, and that really helped him snowball. Although, actually, thinking about that, uh, Korea for Life did get the counter kill, got the kill on the Elise, and although he died, he got first blood, and that put him ahead in lane. So Zergo just managed to snowball that lane without actually being that far ahead to start with. Uh, see mm -hmm. Janna being hovered over here and Nocturne as well. Nocturne's really risen to favor as a jungler recently. I think it's because the map pressure that you have with the paranoia and he switched across the Nautilus. I think basically yeah. what's happening here is I'm being trolled and it's too late at night for me mm -hmm. to be trolled. So if you could just stick with a champion, that would make me very happy. <laughs> yeah, so Nocturne was, I thought was a pretty good pick. Nautilus is a little bit more interesting because I feel like he won't be able to fit in as well. You know, maybe he'll be okay. He's really good early game just with getting strong and stuff. Yeah, it's going to be Nalus and Southern being picked up here. So, Nalus, once again, you know, he's really good in the early game coming into the, the lane and just, you know, really effective at getting ganked off. However, when it comes into late game, definitely going to be having some issues unless he's able to land a good ultimate. And I think his team can really just kind of combo off his ultimate, though. So, Maybe they'll be okay, although generally Nautilus doesn't go too once well late game. However, Sona being picked up combined with that Annie, just a lot, just uh, a lot of a uh, AOE CC coming out there. Yeah, that crescendo into Summon Tibbers is going to be so strong if Annie can get the stun lock properly on it. Um, they do have a lot of CC with the the hook coming out from Nautilus and the depth charge as well. It's going to be. Just a lot of ability for a gank to work out well if they manage to combo their skills. But we see on the other side, Zergo probably playing that Zed is able to dodge Annie's stun if Summon Tibbers comes down. 
Jarvan has that Damascian Strike Dragon Strike combination, is able to get away from a fight quite quickly, add into a fight, and lock people up really nicely. The Elise pickup gives them the cocoon as well, and that's another form of CC. We saw Elise played so well in that last game, but that that was by Maga Sunday, so it'd be interesting to see if they decide to put Elise in the top lane. And Varus, Varus, that chain of corruption really locks people down and that means that if you hit it, they can't be grouped up in the way that they want to be to get the combination off that they have. They have to split themselves up so they don't get hit by the extra procs of it. Yeah. Um, so, at least we did see... So we've seen Elise and Jiren both in last game, except they're on different teams, right? Mm-hmm. And we also no, saw Elise, Elise was on Dr. Norman last game, it's just he was being yeah. played by Maga Sunday. Okay, okay, okay. So Elise gonna be seeing Elise once again. And this is gonna be interesting. So I guess this I mean I would expect more to see Elaine Elise in general Jarvin. I mean I guess it could switch around, but something no, you don't see too often. But Elise and Zeta once again, you know, they have it they have the uh, the assassination potential. Last game we saw him just even put out so much damage, and just imagine it. We saw it from a a, game, a, a jungle at least, but think about you know the lane at least when she's actually able to farm up, and potentially get a little bit more gold. I think from that, um, they're also going to have various there for a lot of uh, CC as well. You're just able to lock up people with that shit and corruption. Oh no! And if this uh, Lu does get picked up, it is a very nice combo with Jarvin. However, we do see uh, Nasus and Graves being picked up for North View High School. What do you think of those two picks? Nasus, I always say this when we talk about Nasus, one of the few infinitely scaling champions in the game. That dog can use the Siphoning Strike just to get an extra 3 damage or 6 damage depending on what he kills with it on his, um, on his Siphoning Strike. And it just means that if you top lane properly, if you manage to get enough CS, or if you jungle properly and get enough CS and enough damage on that Siphoning Strike, you're really an unstoppable force late game. The only problem for you is if you forget about your team, which does happen when you get into the top lane mindset. You're like, it's fine, I'll push this lane, I'll push this lane, I'll push this lane, and your team dies and you're thinking, oh, it's okay because i got a tower, but the other team gets far enough ahead that it doesn't matter that you're unstoppable late game because it's 1v5 in the end of the day. So. We need to see Li Xin farming up well and managing to get as many stacks on his queue as possible, but without neglecting his team. Uh, Graves, really good burst champ. We saw the buckshot into collateral damage. Using the quick draw to m position himself well in team fights can really help you out uh, to get that damage down without being in a susceptible position. However, does get melted down quite quickly if he gets caught, especially if he hasn't got that true grip passive fully procced. He hasn't got the extra armor and magic resist from that. Um, we see Lulu being locked in as well. What do you think about that pick, Crusader? Lulu, as I said, is going to be a very nice combo with uh, Jarvan. When he goes to EQ combo window, and I just realized we should probably take out these summoners, but, uh, summoner blockers, because we're actually going to be seeing a lane Jarvan. Lane Jarvan is strong. Yeah. Like the, one of the major things about him is if you've got that Nasus. Yeah, against Nasus. Nasus really wants to farm up early game. Although he has got that soul eater passive, which gives him the extra life steal, and that really helps out on the siphoning strike. Jarvin, if he can get in there, knock him up, use his dragon strike to get damage off, can, he might be able to lock down Nasus, especially when they get to level 6 and he starts having that cataclysm. The only problem with that is. If Nasus hits level 6 around the same time and has enough mana, he will use that Fury over the Sands, and you're locked in there with someone doing percentage magic damage to you, which is really not what you want. So, really going to depend on the early game for this lane, Jarvan. Yeah. And the thing is with Jarvan, is that he could actually... I, I mean, he could actually go mid lane if he wanted to. And he could go top lane, because I, I think going against Nasus works out for both of them, for mm. both of Zed. And Jarvan, but I do like Jarvan a lot more in the mid lane because Annie, of course, is a lot squishier. I think it's with Jarvan, like, you EQ combo in there, maybe get, like, Golden Egg get us off. You just reduce their armor, just slow them down, and now you're free to auto attack them. And with um, Jarvan's passive martial cadence, he has extra damage on those auto attacks, and he's really just able to take down people in the mid lane. And a lot of people just don't expect it from Jarvan. It's just like, oh, you know, it's a Jarvan, whatever, it's not gonna do anything. 
and then that gyro just wrecks people, and it's it's really really scary. So we I guess kind of have to see how it goes, but I do like both of these team comps coming in here. A little bit interesting, I think, with um, the mixture of North v High School because they have you know some late game champions and some mid slash early game champions. That would be like Nas a lot more early and mid game. Nas is of course being that late game tank. I have one problem for them is Annie getting her AOE stun off in team fights just because it's it is difficult to see an Annie when she's positioning for the for the summon Tibbers, but it's possible. And I think at this sort of level of play, the uh, Doctor Norman team are going to be looking out for it. And I think Maga Sunday is going to keep that repel. Uh, Lulu Shiniko Hoshi is going to keep her whimsy. Zed's going to keep that uh, that shadow dash. Uh, Varus is uh, he's going to be positioning himself as far away from Annie as possible. And you've got the Dragon Strike. Damascene standard combination as well from Permalove and they they should be able to dodge it if like they should be able to it's difficult but it is possible and I'd like to see them like using their flashes and using their mobility to get away from that summon Tibbers it's going to be difficult for them I'm not denying it but at this level of play I expect to see a couple of good dodges coming out in team fights yeah so getting against this loading screen now in this last game of his best of three, so Dr. Norman comes out victorious. We'll move on into a second best of three. If Northview High School wins this game, they'll win the tournament. So, along the line here, Dr. Norman, of course, being in a much tougher position than Northview High School. Of course, last game, they did exceptionally well. And having Zergo. And Maga Sunday back on Zed and Elise must make them feel better because that's what they had last mm -hmm. game. That is what worked last game. And I mean, like you gotta you gotta be a little bit more confident having those these champions coming back for these two guys. And they did so well on them. I mean, we saw so much burst coming out from both of them. And those champions just really, really, really worked out. So I'm really excited to see how it goes. You know, maybe this time I'll just completely turn around, but no, we have to see. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, yeah, so this is possibly the final match of the night, guys. Uh, if you want to see Dr. Norman win, why don't you type that in chat? If you want to see uh, Northview High School win, type that in chat as well. If Northview High School do win, they will be the champions of this summer season and uh, will get some prizes. I'm not sure what they are. I'm sure Crusader Kitten can uh, keep um, us updated as to that. I think, I think we're going to be having RP for the players. Excellent. That's RP it, prizes. Yeah, and you know RP prize is obviously always fun. However, you know what's better? Having sponsors that are actually contributing other things than RP. Um, for the fall season, we're having a five hundred dollar plus prize pool, and it's quite you know we're getting a few sponsorships for that. I think. Um, I don't think I can tell how much it is, but it's a five hundred dollar plus prize pool, and that's. You know, that's, that's, that has to be exciting, guys. We're playing League of Legends against other high schoolers. I mean, come on. Mate, it's got to be fun. I'd be happy to have a $500 prize, school, uh, prize pool like, and I'm at university, so should yeah. be happy I think, to I think we have almost 200 like. teams registered, too. Wow, that's that's freaking exciting. I'm like, Hopefully, I will be able to come back and cast again for you guys because it's been so much fun. Yeah doing these nights. I mean, it is early in the morning here, so I apologize if I make any mistakes. Extremely, extremely early. Having a lot of fun, especially that pentakill in the first game. Career for Life really knocks it out of the ballpark with the uh, Twitch pentakill. Um, we do have a pause at the start of the game. Two Doran's Blade being bought. Uh, some wards coming out here as well from Career Bread. Nothing unexpected at the moment. The only real major thing at the moment is Permalove playing that Jarvan top lane. He hasn't bought any items yet. The interest well we assume it's top lane. Assume it's top lane. It'll be interesting to see what he decides to go for because you could go for the early damage build going long sword into Vampiric Scepter, perhaps building a Tiamat or something uh, into a Ravenous Hydra. Or you could go a bit more defensive and go maybe in early ages, maybe maybe even a Warmox, although Warmox has fallen out of favour a little bit at the moment. So I think that top lane is really going to be what decides this this game, and we've seen that in the last two games as well. Really, a lot of the games have been uh, won or lost in that top lane. Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't expect. What do you think about early invades? I wouldn't expect too many. Although it's it's definitely likely, I think, from I the think, side mm. of 
Northview because they have Nautilus for some early CC. They have Annie. If she wants to charge up her own CC, then it's really, really scary. And a few people on, I think, Dash Norman, they need their combos to come up. Like Zed, not going to be too useful without the Living Shadow to combine his abilities with. Jarman's going to need the EQ combo, or else he's not going to be too strong. But, I mean, we haven't seen this past few games. I wouldn't expect to see it again, uh, this game. Now, Dr. Norman have been really, really defensive. Like, they've just wanted to play safe in both of their both of the starts of the game. So we saw a little bit of an invade from them in the last one, but just stealing away that red buff and not really doing much else. And it looks like they're going to be defensive here, although the Northview High School are trying to get into this, bu into this bush. Graves has managed to get in there, but there's a ward going down. It's an actual three-minute ward, so that's going to stay there for quite a while and just give them a bit of vision and help out that mid lane. Jarvan getting pinged across Permalove, being spotted as he went into that bush. And they're going to go across towards him. Nice Shuriken coming out there from Zergo, just getting a bit of damage. There. Another ward goes down. That's another three-minute ward, so two long-time wards used here by Lulu in this early game. They're going to come round towards this red buff, and Annie has that stun proc. They place a ward in that bush near the red camp, and they're going to back away. Just lots of wards coming out. Both teams trying to be quite safe at the moment. Um, looks yeah, like planes so. are yeah, just rotating round towards their red buff now. He does have that incinerate charge. Oh, here comes the stun onto Zergo, yep. and so much on. damage coming down. Look at that! He's down to about 100 health. The wow. flashing knight would get him, but they decide not to go for it, and no summoner spells used there across the board, so... Although it was yeah, close... What is it? Living Shadow Star, I think? Oh, okay, no, Zergo just walked out of there, okay. So, it's getting dropped really, really low from that. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure, like, if the team was there to follow up, then they definitely could have had that kill, but... You know, just getting some really damage out there, gonna be scaring them out just a bit. Because we're gonna be seeing Jarvan going up in this top lane now. He actually go does go for that elixir. Um, of Fortitude. And he has a lot more early damage with that, of course. Yeah, it's really going to help him out. Um, it will be interesting to see how he decides, when he decides to go in, really, because you could try and go in at level 2 using that, that Dragon Strike Damascus standard combination, or you could try and go level 3 or so when you've got an extra point in your Dragon Strike just to get that bit of extra damage down. But I'm not 100% sure as to when he'll try and engage, just because we don't see top lane Jarvan that often. The Elixir of Fortitude shows that he wants the early fight. Really, he's going to need to use it probably before level 6, otherwise I don't think he's going to have enough damage yeah. to get Leeshin down. I would expect him to go a little bit more aggressive, you know, level 1 and level, or level 3 when he has his abilities up. Um, that's kind of the prime time for Jarvan, I'm pretty sure. Just when he just hit like that EQ combo, when he just got... Some extra damage on a dragon strike. Korea Bread's getting taken oh, like really Lishin. low. Oh yeah, they're definitely trading it off here. Not looking good here for Sona and Grave. It's taking quite a bit of hope. Although they do have some heal to come in though. However, wow, Shinko Hoshi just with the damage and they're just really trading this back down this bombing. Both support is getting fairly low. That's definitely something we have to look out for. The problem oh yeah, so much damage on Shinko. Flash away from him. This is going to be the Buckshot going to be coming off there. Although just, of course, the aggression coming in here and lots of pots being used. Shiniko Hoshi is almost all out of items. Only has a pink one left. Actually, top it's lane. Be, yeah, top coming lane in here from Magasun. The EQ combo. Cocoon does this as well as EQ combo. Goes from Leeshin. He actually wants to use his teleport to get away. And it looks like it will go through. He does get out there. And uh, very, very fast. And... Just didn't have the uh, they wasted both CCs early, and he was able to dodge out of them. Yeah, I mean, it, I think I'd probably count that worth as a gank. He used both his ghost and his teleport early game. Yeah. They're both quite long cooldowns. Like, if I were Maga Sunday, I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. Now he can't teleport away from my next gank. And the yeah. Permalove is 12 CS ahead, and that's double um, the CS of Leishin here. I was. Looking at this bottom lane, and their major problem here for the Dr. Norman team is they have no sustain. Korea Bread yeah. has that Aria of Perseverance, wow, that's just going to heal up. Yeah. Aria of Perseverance is, perseverance. yeah, yeah, just the help picks wasn't quite enough shield, and so he had yeah. to use his barrier, and that's what we're talking about. Korea Bread was able to sustain him and Korea life up to about half health, and when you're fighting at these early levels, that's such a major difference, especially since you don't have that Vampiric Scepter, you don't have the Double Dawns, you don't have the Lifesteal coming out 
from the Varus Lucidaire playing that just to be able to sustain himself in the lane. And we see the CS difference now. It's about double CS here for career for life. And that's really going to push him into the advantage. He's gone for that Vampiric Scepter. Spent around 325 more gold than his lane opponent. Lee Shin getting taken quite low in the top lane as well, actually. And he's just going to back away. But just those auto attacks. You talked about Martial Cadence doing that extra damage and really showing it in that top lane at the moment. Oh! Whoa! Zergo under the tower! Destroying cleanse even with the wrong answer right there. He just went right for that kill and he walked right away from it. Wow, just he didn't even he didn't even need his ultimate. He just went in at level five and was able to pick up that kill. I I I don't I was watching the screen. I was in the mid lane, I just didn't see it happen. He just died. Like it was yeah, just, it was so him. well so well played there by Zergo to manage to get that kill. He used his ignite as well, which might not have been needed, but just that burst was insane there from uh, Zergo, and he's going to be able to go back, pick up that Hex Drinker, which is really oh, going to wow. help him out in that lane. And that's a lot of early gold spent, and it's really going to use that 250 magic damage shield to mitigate the summon Tibbers, which is going to come out soon. Cleanse still has his Ignite up, so that's one advantage he has in that lane now. But he's gone Blasting one first, that's not going to give him mana back, it's not going to give him the sustain that he might want. He has got that Dawn's Ring, some damage coming down in bot lane, but I think they're just going to disengage this. Well, maybe not because Wrong Answer wants to come in from the side, but Sneak Wahoshi flashed in from Korea for life. Auto attacks able to pick up this kill, do they want to dive onto Lucid Dare though? Give me some taking it on that terror shots from Wrong Answer, but they go in and back out of there. Meanwhile, mid lane Zergo wants to go aggressive, gonna get stunned off here. And Zergo going for that hex turn, I think, is a really, really smart pickup. Because he he has to be scared of that anti burst when it comes to the time which is level 6, because anti burst is gonna come out and he could get absolutely wrecked by, it, wrecked by it. But he's being extremely smart and going for a little bit more of a defensive item. And, um,. You know, just being a lot more tanky with that, and he's still able to provide out some damage, but it's very smart of him to just go for a little bit more defensive item, just to make sure he doesn't lose any of his advantage. And he's, just heading, he's actually heading up top lane now. Yeah, it looks like he's going to come in for this gank. He has got death mark. There's a ward there by Lee Shin as well, and I don't know if he's going to be caught out probably by this. There's the ghost coming ghost. out. Nice combination, though. The Ikukom does land this death by Kaxim, and Nasus is just completely locked into the Cataclysm. There's a Zergo fight in bot lane at the same kill. time. Yeah, bottom lane, career flight, game drop, solo exhaust does go down to loose there. But Maga Sunday, he's gonna be coming around on the side of career, but he's getting taken down. Maga Sunday with that kill, career for life, tries to get on the Shiko Hoshi. Gonna be popping the barrier, but it gets taken out. Lucid there with that kill. He took tower shots, they trying to pick up a kill, but was unable to. And now it's 1 to 4 in favor of Dr. Norman. Yeah, we talked about that lockdown coming out from uh, Permalove in the top lane. and. You managed to get the ghost out of Lishin, and because Lishin doesn't have an, a way to get away from that cataclysm, got locked in there with Permalove and with Zergo, almost took Permalove down, but not quite having that damage because he doesn't have the offensive summoner. If he'd taken an Ignite instead of the teleport, or if he'd taken Ignite instead of the ghost or something like that, he would have had the extra damage. They've managed to get this dragon, and it puts them 2,200 gold in the lead, and that's really going to be helpful. Um, going back to that kill earlier where Shaniqua Hoshi got caught out a little bit as Nautilus came in for the gank, still had exhaust up, so I think Shaniqua will be regretting the fact that he didn't use the exhaust, uh, exhaust a bit earlier there. Lee Shin taking a lot of damage in top lane though, and we talked about this yeah. team, he's still got the Elixir of Fortitude as well, so he might engage at some point. Yeah, he hasn't really needed to use it, so he might as well keep it in case he needs it, you know. When he's getting ganked, when he just wants to go for a kill, when he wants to dive, or something like that. Rush for that team at definitely a smart item, puts off so much more damage onto onto him, and he is so ahead in CS, and that's just gonna increase his CS lead a lot, because he's able to push up the lane much quicker there with that splash damage. And um, that's really gonna help him out in this laning phase, and really just boxing Lishin out of um, a farm. Nishin has actually been farming pretty decently. He has plus 72 um, on his stacks for his uh, his siphoning strike. Oh, there's so. an engage coming in here mid lane. Oh gosh, EQ combo flash away with a cataclysm right after the flash. There's a death mark from Zergo. <laughs> <laughs> Only slight so overkill necessary. there. Only That's slight so overkill. Now he's on a killing spree. Hey, dude, it's a kill. It's a worth.
three people came into that mid lane, and he just got deleted. Cleanse really just can't can't do anything, honestly. Uh, we saw the damage coming out there from Permalove. That Tiamat really just doing a lot of damage to Cleanse, almost just taking him down by himself. The Death Monk did come in from Zergo, probably not necessary, which is why I had a little chuckle to myself. Yeah. But they managed to get the kill down. Lee Shin taking down to about half health here in top lane. The Elixir of Fortitude has been popped in that last engage by Permalove, and it looks like Maga Sunday is going to try and come up here and go for this gank. Dang, this pressure should just be an easy game. Cocoon does land, EQ Kama does come out. And Legion is gone. Magus Sunday with that kill. There wasn't much that uh, Legion could do. And Dr. Norman just taking such an early lead. I mean, this is looking very, very similar to the last game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why they didn't ban, ban out Elise for Mega Sunday because it's just yeah. he's so strong in it, and I don't know how he's getting this damage down that he's getting down because he's not building that many I AP items. Like he's got a Spirit Stone at the moment, and did you see the damage he got down in that last fight? I mean, I know it's percentage health, but that was still so much, and there's actually a pause coming out here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this bot lane because. Shaniqua Hoshi and Lucidea are probably the only lane that's losing at the moment. They're about 18, 16 CS behind. And um, Career Bread and Career for Life actually hit level 6 and 7 before they did. So they were looking for an engage. And Shaniqua Hoshi hasn't actually quite leveled up Wild Goth yet. We'll do that in just a second. And then we'll be able to counteract the crescendo coming out from the Career Bread on Sona. I think that if Graves can continue to push this advantage forward, they might be able to snowball that lane into an advantage for their team. However, Bowis does have that Blight Quiver, Quiver is doing percentage health damage, and so that will probably be able to push that back into Dr. Norman's favor. Um, not quite sure why this pauses out. I wonder if you could tell us, Crusader, as you probably have chat open, and I do not because I don't want yeah. nasty words. Uh, it's taking a little while to explain it. Okay. They, they just had Lee Shin, so. Hmm. No, Lee well, Shin. Well, he was having. He was He's having probably. Okay, problems. let's let's make up. Let's make up this a story. Okay. Why Lee Shin is DC'd, so. You can start. Okay, well, Lee Shin's cat. No, but no, wait, we have to do one word. One word. Okay, Lee Shin. That's my word. That possessive. Lee Shin's. Cats. Have. Begun to destroy the huge <laughs> play part. Yeah, back the game. Huh? The huge. What? Why would you say the huge? You could just go like destroy, destroy the world the or something like that. Destroy the huge noun. This uh, huge is an adjective. You put a noun after that. I'm describing. Yeah, I did. It, I said play part. You have, to have, you have to have rich words in your story. You can't just have simple sentences, dude. I you think gotta, you gotta Leishan's describe cats them. have started to destroy the world is quite a good sentence. You could have done destroy the huge something. Anyways. You see, they wanted to hear the end and you ruined it because you No, nah, that's probably... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't sleep. We were just looking at the story while we were in pause. Okay, um, anyways, we are back into this game now. Gotta be super professional here. As Maga Sunday, gonna be walking in and just putting out the board. So, 1-6 to six right now in this game. Dr. Norman Bethune, I mean, they're just, they've just taken this game by storm already. This, the second game and this third game here. And we might be seeing, and like if this, if this game continues to go in favor of Dr. Norman, we might be seeing the second best of three. As fun as that would be. It's it's quite possible. Um, we see actually Zergo trying to go down towards the spot and they're trying to skip away from that ward, but he's going to actually meet up here with Cleanse. Cleanse going the long way around, trying to be safe. Ooh. But here comes Zergo. That piercing arrow did a lot. He's actually maxing it out. This Zergo is, anyway, Zergo does have the Cleanse here. Summon Tubers does come off. He's chasing over the wrong, uh, running over the wrong answer. The knight is ticking down. Looks like Cleanse will be able to live, and now Zergo is in trouble. Flashing. Wrong answer with that kill. Zergo going a little bit too aggressive there and got taken out and paid the price for that. Looks like bottom tire is going to get pretty low but not going to go down here. 
Yeah, no, so I just played just... Pumila. Pumila from top lane room down here. No, actually, Crescendo onto Shiniku Hoshi. The... Oh, there is the Dredge coming down the Cataclysm as well. Career Bread is taken out. However, wrong anti trap inside the Cataclysm. And Career Life is on the outside. Cannot do anything. Double kill for uh, for Pumila up here. And that is now going to be the tower. Yeah, Wrong Answer engaged that fight but didn't realize how much damage there was in that bot lane. Permalove just got that Ravenous Hydra now, it's just doing huge amounts of damage and they managed just to shut boots. people down. Pardon? Doesn't even have boots. Yeah, it doesn't even have boots. Why do you need boots? You can kill stuff. Uh, Shaniqua Hoshi using the Wild Ghost on herself to keep herself alive and there's another oh, engage. Oh, alive. Why would you do this yourself? Oh, he actually does pick up the count of Shinko Hoshi. He might get away. Dragon Strike is not able to light a career for life. Able to escape. Here comes Cleanse. Here comes Cleanse. Oh, well, yeah, he's coming around here. Loose stay getting low. And, oh, okay. Permula wants to go back in here. Wrong answer has to turn. Everybody respawning. Now coming back. But Zergo is here with full health. Gonna get snared down though. And now he has to run away from this one. The dredge on is not up for like 10 more seconds. So. Can't really get this catch off. He's just trying to run at them. This huge Nautilus just kind of lumbering over here as top lane Maga Sunday gets the kill onto Leisha. Not to sure what happened there, but Maga Sunday a little bit low after that, it looks like. Yeah, managing to get the kill. And it's really become a, an Elise top lane versus Nasus and just trying to make sure that he doesn't get any farm. They're going to push down this mid lane and probably get the tower hit. I think what we need to look at in that last fight was how well Queer for Life did. He got the kill onto Shaniqua and then managed to flash away from the Dragon Strike, dodge it out as well, and so although Permalove burnt his flash, wasn't able to get the kill. Dragon is up now, so they can rotate round towards that as well. And if they manage to get this dragon, they're gonna bring themselves back into around three thousand gold behind, but they are just over four thousand four and a half thousand at the moment. Um Career for Life actually getting his red buff instead. It's almost got that blood duster built. He got home guard as well, just to get himself back into that fight a little bit quicker. And there are lots of it, like small skirmishes, so Home Guard is actually really, really strong at the moment. And I'm going to keep talking because for some reason Crusader has decided not to talk with me. Um, okay, so they steal away that dragon. That puts them about 6,000, well, 5,400 in the gold in the lead now. And they're going to push down this mid turret as well. Should be able to get this turret down. It's on about three quarters health, but Valus and Maga Sunday are there and they should be able to just get some damage now. Career for Life and Cleanse have decided to make them back off, just pushing them back. Zed is in the bot lane, farming that up, and he's about 20 CS ahead of his lane opponent as well, and that's really helpful for him. Cleanse is coming round, she's got that stun charged up, and he's going to try and get it down. Here comes Permalove into the top lane, managed to get so much damage down on Leishan. Wither gets chucked down, he's not going to be able to chase this. Dragon Strike comes out as well, that's about half Leishan's health. They're going to try and push down this mid lane, but the turret's already gone, so I don't really know what they're doing here. Zergo in that bot lane, trying to push down the bot lane turret. He's going to back away as they all go down towards him. Meanwhile, Permalove is pushing out that top lane, should be able to get down to the second tier turret, because Leishan's had to go back. He has got Teleport up though, so if he wants to be really defensive he could teleport into it i really doubt that he's going to do that though he's pushing that lane mid lane is a 4v4 at the moment uh 4v3 sorry because zergo isn't quite there yet he has got his death mark up so when he joins the fight after building that bilge water cutlass hex drinker and brutalizer interesting build you don't commonly see it but gives you that armor penetration with the cooldown reduction bilge water builds into blade of the moon king which is really strong as well and here comes permala from the side there is a ward in that bush cleanse is going to try and use the stun uses that incinerate across the wall and they're going to go in on this there's a him of valor look at the damage down there on cleanse about half of his health Varus is still pushing this mid lane career for life taking not low at all, still on full health. Here comes Zergo jumping on Career for Life. Deathmark comes in, there's the death charge onto him. Wrong Arts is getting taken a little bit down. Cleanse is on about half health. There's the chain of corruption onto Wrong Arts. Look at the damage. Cleanse flashing in, trying to use the summon timbers. Hits three people, but they both get melted. Permalove's here as well. Career for Life gets taken down. Magasunder uses the repel to get out of that one. Leeshin is here as well. Everyone's going back on a bit a lower health than they started the fight, obviously. And Magus Sunday. Managing to put that Bolotar Spidling out, they're going to be able to get this turret down. And although Leishin and Korea Bread are still alive, they're not going to be able to do anything about this, really. They could get the second turret, turret as well. Mega Sunday, about half health, perm level, about third as well. Nice cocoon there onto Leishin, manages to, to sustain up through the damage coming out from the Bolotar Spidling. Lucid Air getting that turret down to about half health. There comes the piercing arrow and the 
spirit fire coming out of the militia and just pushing people back, trying to reduce their magic and armor, magic resist and armor, but not really able to do much because he can't really fight on his, on his own at the moment. Lucidair getting spirit fired again, just stopping them from backing. If Cleanse can get there quickly enough, they might be able to win this fight. But they're backing away as well. They've got around 8,000 gold in the lead at the moment. They're all going to go back and spend their gold. Zergo is 50 CS ahead of Annie at the moment, and that's really pushing that mid lane advantage. He's four kills up, and he's died three times. It hasn't really made a huge impact on this team. We saw a nice tippers there in the last fight, but wasn't able to do as much as he probably would have hoped to have done. Uh, looking down across the items at the moment, Ravenous Hydra, Brutalizer, Pickaxe, Longsword here from Jarvan. No boots still. Probably going for that last whisper, which is quite a strong item on Jarvan as well. Going in on Lucian as well, and look at that, there's the Cataclysm, this is going to get so much damage. Fury of Sans has come out as well, and Permanent decides to back away with that Fury, melting his health because of the percentage magic damage. Um, Zerga going in on Cleanse, Summon Timmers gets dodged so nicely done there, there's the exhaust as well, but here comes Korea for life. Zergo has to flash away, and Cleanse gets taken really low, here comes Lucidair from the side, Piercing Arrow comes out. Just hitting on the tip. There's Maga Sunday getting down on Korea, but Korea Bear's going to get taken quite low. Shaniqua Hoshi actually getting the kill there. Korea for Life getting get jumped across. There's the Venomous Bite, and Korea Life is going to go down. Nice quick draw across the wall, but there comes the Dragon Strike Domestic Standard combination. Permalove might get jumped on a little bit here by Lee Shin and Wrong Answer. Cocoon actually misses that. Nice wild growth on him, keeping him alive. They're going to be able to push down this mid tier 2 turret. Down to about half health already, and here comes Lucid Edge, melting that health down. Zergo's still there, Magus Sunday's there as well, and Shaniqua Hoshi as well. Um, Jarvan has decided to go into the top lane and try and push that down. They get another turret, and that's going to push them 10,000 gold in the lead. Dragon is up in about a minute and a half, and they can get that as well, and that will give them an extra 1,000 gold per player. If we look across the gold, 1,000 sitting there on Varus. If he goes back and spends that, he can complete. Well, he could probably go for that um, zeal, which is probably what he's building into with the uh, dagger and the berserker's grease. Maybe going to a static ship. Um, <laughs> you guys can make up a story as to why Brian's disappeared in chat if you want to. I, I will read it out when you're done with it, obviously. Crusader Kitten. Um, Dragon's spawning actually in a minute here, and it's going to be interesting to see what the big play is, because we've got an article. Crusader Kitten was attack on Titan today. Um, there's the Wither coming out onto Varus, just stopping him from being able to um, back and I, That's basically all that Lishin's done at the moment. He's just stopped people from backing. And yeah, that's fine. He has got just over 200 stacks onto his Q at the moment. Let's have a look at exactly what that number is. 255 stacks. So it's quite a nice amount of stacks, but doesn't really do much if you're not in the fights, and that's what we've seen. Like he hasn't really been able to do a huge amount in these fights because he hasn't been there. Nice engage here by Zergo into bot, bot lane. There's the death mark, and Vong Arts is just getting melted. Ignite is taking one more Shuriken there, getting the kill, and really, this is what's been happening. Zergo's been picking someone off and managing just to get that kill quite easily, and then. They've been grouping up and going for a lane. Uh, Cleanse getting chunked a little bit there by the Shurikens. Mega Sunday is engaging on Leash and going behind the second tier turret. And it looks like they're just going to group around this mid tier, uh, this bottom tier turret, say, try and get that down. But they have got a nice wave clear here from the Northview High School team, so able just to stop them from taking that down. Dragon it has spawned though, and so they should go around to this and try and take that away. Going to have a quick sip of water while I am talking because my voice is actually dying a little bit at the moment. Free dragon there for the Dr. Norman team. Um, Crusader Kitten apparently was assaulted by kittens and that is an interesting way to go. Um, probably one of the nicer ways to die. If I were to be assaulted by anything it would either be kittens or puppies. I think kittens probably bit more scratchy, puppies a bit more bitey. Zergo engaging here on Lishan in the bot lane, and Shaniqua Hoshi is around as well. There's the help picks, death mark comes out, and Lishan's gonna go down. Fury of the Sands, nice whimsy there. And Lishan is gonna get melted by Zergo. Nice damage coming out of Siphoning Strike, but one Siphoning Strike in a fight really doesn't do enough. And they're gonna be able to push down this mid tier turret. Permalove is in top lane, pushing that down as well. Career Bread getting caught out. So much damage coming down from Maga Sunday. One more. Venomous Bite should be enough. Volatile Spiderman comes out. Neurotoxin as well. Not quite enough damage. Career for Life is getting engaged upon hit by Permalove. Look at that damage. He gets the kill. Cataclysm managing to get that down. I think Crusader Kitten may have joined me again. So let's Yay. pass it over to him. 
Yeah, so apparently I missed quite a bit because the lead that um, Dr. Norman was holding has just been completely amplified as Top Tag goes down. Cleanse gets blown up. Zergo going all the way across the base. Two gets stunned and taken out by Lee Shin. Looks like Crescendo will be coming off in a great one. Good video. Looks like quite a few people, but there's not enough follow up. Hook does land to Lisa Dare. Wild Gold comes off. Magasun is trying to be that tanky front line for him. Cleanse is still trying to come back into this fight. Lucy Dare is still trying to run. Flash lands and hits the wall. Lee Shin picks up another kill for himself. However, top, uh, top tide as well goes down. Because at that time it was the top uh, inhibitor tower. Two go down, Li Shin getting scared, dude. He is that big dog a little bit, kind of peaking with power now. However, overall on the team, it's not been going well for uh, Northview, it looks like. Uh, Northview really just managing to snowball their advantage. Uh, they picked off a few people. Uh, Zergo's done a very good job of getting around the back of people and managing to take them out. And Li Shin, although he's big, hasn't really been doing a huge amount in team fights at the moment. He's around 60 CS behind his lane opponent as well. It just shows how well Permalove has done with that Ravenous Hydra. Yeah, so... Okay, so... Looking over at these item builds, the builds... There has just been... So much growth. Like you can look, Doctor Norman is just getting filled up with items. Cleanse doesn't even have a full item. He has a Seeker's Iron Guard and a Blasting Wand. And then we look at over at um, Zergo. He's built a Blade of the Ruin King. He also has a Black Cleaver. He has quite a few smaller items there as well, but just really outclassing Cleanse at this point. I think you can look the same thing. Same thing for the Jungle's Elise. Really building up and taking this as well. Some damage there. Li Shin has been looking pretty strong, he's able to get these auto attacks off and the siphoning strikes, however this duel with Zergo, we'll have to see how it goes, it's like a brick wall hitting a huge assassin, and actually Career for Life gets in there, flashes in with the collateral damage and buckshot for that kill, however Maga Sunday and Lucidaire are starting up on this Baron. Yeah, and if they can get this ban away for that kill, it's definitely worth it. It's on around 6,000 HP at the moment, and they have no idea that this is going down. Nautilus is slowly trudging towards it. There it goes. Baron's going to come wow. back up around 32 minutes and 20-odd seconds. Nautilus is going to get caught out here. Yeah, they're jumping in. Cataclysm, career for life, has to get out of there, but the rest of his team is getting blown up. A tall, but actually from Leechin onto the back line, but he can't do anything. He doesn't have his ultimate up. And looks like he might be in trouble. There's a double kill so far for Lee there. Flash EQ come from Permalove. Lee Shin, that teleport just led him straight to his death. Four people taken out from Northview High School. And Dr. Norman with the Collegiate Institute. So far ahead. Baron and four kills. No, uh, it's a pretty small victory there. I mean, I'm not sure what they can do. I mean, they could possibly push down two inhibitors right now. Yeah, I mean... Permalove has just played so well this game. 6 0 6, 80 CS ahead of his lane opponent. I mean, I don't like to put, say, one player won the game because the entire team's been good, but he has just played out of his skin in this game, and we've seen how much impact the top laners have had on these games in the last couple of um, matches. And just 6 0 6, Last Whisper Brutalizer, building into that Sunfire Cake. He's got level 1 boots, and we're 27 minutes into the game. It's, it's impressive, really. Yeah, really just, oh man, just been so scary at this point. And looking over, like even supports you're seeing, there's already a locket finished up on Lulu. Able to help your team, and oh, Korea Bread is going to be completely caught off here. However, Magasin decides, no, a little bit too far for it to try to go in uh, for too much of this. It goes ahead and backs off. Hmm. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how they decide to close out this game, because it's pretty much their choice now. We see Lee Shin and Cleanse pushing out this mid lane, trying to stop those super minions from pushing down on their Nexus, but Zergo is split pushing. If they wanted to, they could have Permalove split pushing as well. They know the teleport's down for a while. Engage oh, here on Korea for Life! For life. Being jumped on by Zergo, but I don't think enough bursts landed on his Korea for Life. Zergo now is in trouble. He is able to pick up the count's career for life, however, he actually might be able to take a career red. No, maybe not. He's still trying to run away from this unleashing with that kill. Going a little bit too manly there. Four people. Actually, no, five people turned up their bottom lane to deal with Zergo. We're able to take him off, however, career for life did go down. 
So, the, uh, look, looks like having the Dragon's new coming out, so I don't think too much is lost really for um for either of these teams. I mean, the kill is good for the um, Northview High School team. Oh, Korea Red Gang engaged, wow. Wow. He died. Alright. That's what happens if you get cataclysms by Jarvan, who's got a Ravnus Hydra, Last Whisper, Brutalizer, and a Sunfire Cape, obviously. Um, yeah. Pamela just doing so much damage at the moment. And I think what's happened really is they've accepted Zergo's gonna die with his split push, but they're just hoping he can take someone with him. And if he can, they're using that to take other advantages. Um, Clint's getting taken down a little bit here by the Volatile Spiderlings. They're trying to push this turret. Not really doing a huge amount. They do have Baron buff at the moment, so they're going to try and use that extra health regeneration, the extra attack damage and ability power it gives them to push lanes and sustain themselves up. Um, it'd be interesting to see how they rotate around here. Yeah, it looks like, you know, it's always smart to have Z when you have Zed, just have him split push. Because he is just so strong. And the thing is, when the rest of the team is already this head, I mean, they can probably win a 4v5. And Zerg can just keep switching chain, because no one can duel Zergo at this point. It took like five people to duel, to, or five people went after Zergo up in this bottom lane. So him split pushing is probably the smartest idea for um, Dr. Norman to just keep on applying their pressure. They have Baron buff, they'll just siege down towers, they'll have Zergo split push because he's so effective at it. And Northview High School, you know, if they send something to deal with Zergo, they'll probably die. Looks like they'll be sending Lee Shin up here. This top inhibitor is definitely going to be going down as Zergo actually wants to get out to the leash and actually he's going to be taking some damage but Deathmark does come off here. He's going to be trading off the damage here. Hexer comes off and wow, the Deathmark doing so much. Here comes Creep for Light now trying to finish off the job but Collateral damage just wasn't enough. And now looks like this bottom tower will be going down and potentially this inhibitor. Yeah, uh, Zergo did well to escape the collateral damage there, and uh, escape the buckshot, sorry, and they managed to get all three inhibitors. He's going to get engaged upon by Career for Life, but uses that Living Shadow to get away again, and three inhibitors down, I think it's a 99.8% chance that you're going to win the game. So hopefully we'll see Dr. Norman be able to uh, finish this one off pretty quickly. Baron is actually up in about two minutes, so... They will probably try and push out the lanes, go around for that, get Baron, and then push down this Nexus with the two inhibitor turrets. I mean, two Nexus turrets, sorry. The super minions will be spawning in packs of two now down each lane, which means they'll have extra pushing ability. Also, all the other minions get extra damage and extra health as well. So, it'll be interesting to see they deal with this uh, push just coming out from the minions here on the Northview team, especially with Baron coming up in about a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, three waves of super minions. Um, I'm not too sure what can uh, what can really happen for um, them at this point. Because also getting the hybrid doesn't only spawn super minions, but it gives minions more HP. So these minions looks like I'm 55, 620. It looks like they have like about I don't know, maybe like 300, 200 more health. The minions on red side have 200, 300 more health than the minions on blue side. So, for one thing, it's tankier minions, of course. He's just having those super minions into that play there. Engage in bot lane. He's gonna get jumped on by Zergo. That is the kill for Zergo. Zergo might be going down. Yes, he will. Wrong answer with that one. However, actually, that mid lane inhibitor did just respawn. Baron, however, is coming up soon. So, it'll be up to uh, Dr. No and decide what they want to do. Looks like they want to go for the push. And you can't blame them here, they can push down, they know that they're the stronger team. Zergo, Zergo has been, Zergo, sorry, has been strong, but it's been Permalove most of the time, and then another engage coming, coming in. coming down, Death Charge onto Permalove. Crescendo doesn't hit anybody as the front line of Leech and Wrong Answer try to dive onto Lucid Dare, but they will be dying as a result of it. Maga Sunday picks up the kill onto Wrong Answer. Inhibitor goes down, this looks like it's going to be game right here, and this means with, um, Dr. Norm within Collegiate Institute picking up this first best of three will be moving on into a second best of three to decide the tournament winner. So we'll pretend like this best of three never happened and the next best of three is going to be the decider for who wins the High School Star League League of Legends Summer Tournament. Really well played there by <laughs> Dr. Norman Bethune College Institute. Did uh, very well to just be able to um, 
snowball their early advantage uh, with Jarvan getting the early kills, Zed getting a couple of early kills as well. They uh, used that split push very well, managed to uh, get the other turrets uh, and inhibitors while Zed was split pushing, and the Baron actually really helped them up as well. I think they probably would have won the game without it, but it's always better to be safe than be sorry, especially in these best of threes. Uh, we're going to just have a quick pause while we set up the second best of three. I'm not sure if the players will want a short pause before the next one starts as well. Um, so we'll get into them as soon as possible. I'm going to put some music on really quickly and uh, thanks for watching guys.